everyone and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Becca and I share this channel with my best friend Sophie. And Sophie has recently done a video all about her trip to Uganda, which was volunteering through the University of Birmingham. And my video today is all about my university ski trips. So I went to the University of Warwick and went on the ski trip all three years there. Um, so I feel like I've got quite a bit of experience and knowledge to share with you and hopefully can answer all your questions. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video um, and comment down below any questions that you have throughout watching this video. So just before I get into talking about, um, you know, what to take and what to know like before when you're traveling and when you're in the resort, I just wanted to talk a bit more generally about the university ski trip but if you don't care about any of that and want to hear all the latest stuff if you go in the description I'll leave the timestamps for all the different elements of this video. So as I mentioned I went on the university ski trip all three years of my undergraduate degree with the University of Warwick and this was through the Ski and Sew Society of Warwick Snow. I highly recommend going on the ski trip if you haven't have gathered already. Um, I absolutely loved it hence why I went all three years. So we went to tea then Val Terrain and then Val Desert and I loved all three of those resorts they were so good because they had such a mix of different runs for different abilities so in most universities they'll have a ski trip at Christmas time and that's like the main one when most people go that's the one I went on all three years um, and they also have like a smaller ski trip at Easter time as well which is mainly just for the exec and their friends 50 people go on that one at Easter time whereas like a lot more obviously go on um, the Christmas one in terms of like price and um, when the ski trip trips are um, obviously it completely depends on you know whether you're booking lessons whether you're hiring equipment whether you fly or get the bus um, whether you're eating out for every meal whilst you're out there um, so price completely varies but I think as a like rough ballpark figure mine were approximately about a grand every single year which I know seems like a lot but it is absolutely worth it, I think. And that was including everything, including like all the clothes that I had to buy as well. Well, you don't have to buy, but I decided to buy as well. So my first top tip is to do a vlog. And I know this sounds a bit weird and maybe you're like, oh, I'm not into YouTube, I'm not a YouTuber, but it was so much fun to do a vlog, not just for ski trips, but for every holiday that you go on with your friends. It's so much fun to look back on and you can see all and relive all those memories again. And I absolutely loved it and highly, highly recommend doing that. So we did that for all three years and it's so good to look back on all the memories um, and not just through photos, but also through videos and you can just play it. They're about five minutes long each and they're absolutely amazing. So I'll try and include some footage from them in this video and also some photos as well, um, but obviously won't be including the whole thing because I don't want to, you know, force my friends to go on YouTube. So as I just mentioned, I went on the uni ski trip with my friends all three years, different friends each year though, um, but some of them went every single year like me. And I highly recommend doing that. I think it's so good because you get to obviously share rooms with them, um, travel with them on the coach, uh, cook dinners or go out for meals with them, ski with them, etc. It was really fun going with friends, but at the same time, I don't think you need to at all. Um, in second year, we actually kind of had like a friend of a friend that we knew was going and he came and joined us um, for like food and uh, pre-drinks and stuff like that when we were going out every night um, and one of the guys staying in his room also came and that was so good because you know you get to make friends and they were so lovely and we saw them afterwards and we were at uni and stuff like that as well so yeah you don't have to know people that are going don't be put off by that but I think even if you like ask the exec for some of the people that are going or like find someone on your course that's going on the ski trip I think it's really good to know people before because then you know you can kind of plan together ask questions to them etc so before you go on the trip what do you need to know well I'll put on screen the kit list that I've made um, of all the different things I think you need for a university ski trip obviously you don't have to take everything um, but I think it's really good to take these things and you'll notice some things on the list are things like tin foil and like washing up liquid and stuff like that and you know you don't really need those it depends on the accommodation but from my experience with the ski trip accommodation you do need to take your own cleaning products and stuff like that and um, the reason why I say you should take it with you rather than buying it when you're up the mountain is because obviously everything's a lot more expensive up the mountain because they've got to get the, you know the lorries up the mountain and it costs a lot more and you can split the essentials um, between you in each of your bags um, and it's definitely a lot cheaper so what we did was three of us out of the group went to Aldi every year and we just do like a massive ski shop and just buy things for the ski trip 
So I think we split it based on like the rooms that were going. If we had a boys room and a girls room, we'd split that. So by like two washing up liquids, two lots of tin foil, etc. which I guess you don't necessarily need to do, but if your rooms are apart, then it's definitely a good idea. So we paid, I think between four and eight pounds each per person for this Aldi shop, which is nothing at all in the grand scheme of things, considering when we, if we'd have bought it when we were up the mountain, it probably would have cost us about 20 pounds each. So yeah, highly, highly recommend um, buying stuff before. So this can also include things like pasta and pasta sauces too um, just like any kind of dry food basically and then usually when you're at the bottom of the mountain if you are getting the like you need bus to get there um, then you also have like a food shop at the bottom so that's when you'd buy you know your meats your fresh food um, and again that's slightly cheaper because they don't have to transport it up the mountain but when you are up the mountain um, we bought things like bread every day um, some cheeses some meats anything that we'd run out of basically um, and also any like mixers for drinks we bought when we were at the top of the mountain as well so also before you go if you are skiing for the first time like i was um, with regards to like clothing and skiing equipment i would definitely recommend hiring um, skis poles and boots just because you can get ones that suit you and you can always swap them if they um, are inappropriate but I would recommend borrowing clothing from friends if you know someone that skis a lot and it's your first time skiing. Um, I know a lot of people have like spare jackets and spare salad pets and stuff like that, or helmets or goggles or gloves, just anything. Basically, if you're buying everything new the first time, it can be very, very expensive. So yeah, it's good to like, if you can borrow something, definitely borrow it. So for example, the first time I went, I borrowed the ski goggles that I was wearing from Sophie. Or if you are thinking of buying, that's absolutely fine. That's what I did as well. Ask your friends that have been skiing before what kind of brands to get. So although like Topshop may look really nice, they may not be the most practical in terms of like technical gear but saying that I do know people who were wearing Topshop um, and slopes and they looked amazing so I bought all of my outerwear ski gear from TK Maxx and it was from the brand Spider so I just asked my friends you know what are good brands and they recommended Spider, Heli Hansen, um, North Face that kind of thing and then for goggles, gloves, helmet uh, etc I went for Dragon Goggles and Solomon um, everything else and I think I just looked online for that and just you know found the cheapest place that did it um, but obviously it's good to try stuff on as well if you can just to keep that cost down because obviously it can be very expensive to start with it's good to look in like TK Maxx and Sports Direct in terms of travel to the resort I got the bus all three years there and back and it's oh, it's like a 20 to 24 hour bus and it's really quite painful to be honest um, I mean I'm quite small myself and I still found it quite uncomfortable so I can't imagine the people who are a lot taller than me um, a top tip for that would be if you are going to go on the bus and you want to sit with friends, you know, be picky about like the sizes of your friends that you sit with. So for example, my boyfriend and his best friend on um, the first ski trip decided they wanted to sit next to each other. And I think that lasted about an hour before they had to switch because they're both like over six foot lads and they just had no leg room between them. Um, so yeah, we had to like swap the seats around to make sure that they were a bit more comfortable um, and maybe sit on the aisle seat I'd say as well if you're if you've got bigger legs because then you can put your feet in the aisle so with the bus you usually go straight from your university down to Dover um, and then you get the ferry from there and that's usually with other buses as well so you'll see like loads of other people from your university which is really good and then you'll um, go on the ferry and then travel overnight through France obviously based on the resort you're going to for me it was through France every time um, and then you'll get to um, a service stop that you have like breakfast at and everything so we had, I think, like a McDonald's breakfast or something like that. Um, or there was like a Starbucks or really nice like pastry shops, but we were trying to keep the price down a bit. So another top tip that I have in regards to travel, if you are going to go on the bus, we took pizza um, all three years. So I think the first year we ordered like a Domino's pizza and then had half of it for dinner that night that we were traveling and then half of it the next morning or like in the afternoon the next day as well. So just wrap it up in tin foil. It's so tasty. You definitely need the calories and you don't want anything that will smell too much as well. So pizza was the ideal for us. We'll have a couple of stops probably. It depends how far behind or how far in front they are. Um, with regards to timings as to how many stops you get. My next suggestion would be if you are deciding to drink on the bus, which I didn't all three years, but if you are deciding to do that, it might be better to drink spirits. So for example, if you wanted like a nightcap or something, um, it would be better to drink, you know, like a rum or like any kind of spirit, to be honest, rather than wine and beer. And the reason for that is because there's a tiny toilet on the bus and it's disgusting usually as well. I 
yeah, I, I didn't use it any of the three years, but like anyone who sat by it could really smell the toilet. It was disgusting. Um, but yeah, I think it's better to try and avoid using that. So try not to drink um, wine and beer if you are going to drink on the bus. And also people like sick as well on the bus and it's just not ideal for everyone else around you as well. So if you really don't fancy at the 24 hour bus journey, I feel like I've sold it quite well. You can always fly. So I know a couple of my friends flew. So you can uh, fly to Geneva from pretty much any airport in the UK and then you can get the bus from there as in not the uni bus with everyone else on but you can get a bus that's about like three or four hours. It depends on where you're going, obviously where you'll fly to and which bus you'll get and how long it will take and everything like that. But if you're not sure of like what company to use or how to get the bus up, I think my friends use Ben's bus, but uh, speak to either Nuco or Wasteland, like whoever your reps are that are doing the uni ski trip or ask the exec because they'll have more details for you um, or just have a Google. That's that's what most of my friends did. And then I'm trying to paint the picture here. So you've got all your stuff ready, you've got the bus and you're very excited on your way to resort. What happens when you get into resort? Well, first things first is dump your bags, find your room, collapse for like two minutes. And then if the ski shops are still open where you can get your higher equipment, run and get that because it's so much better to have it um, when ready for you in the morning. You skip all the queues in the morning and yeah, highly, highly recommend going and getting your higher equipment. So that's your boots, um, your poles and your skis or snowboard. So once you've got your um, skis and everything, you're ready to go the next morning. If you're like me and a first time skier, or you know, you've been a couple of times, um, but you just want some lessons to get better. You can either do like private one-to-one -one lessons, which are quite expensive, or you can do group sessions. And that's usually with people from your university or the other universities that are going at the same time. So I think ours had people from University Arts London, Cambridge and Oxford. Um, they went at the same time as us, which is in the first week of December, where it usually goes. And yeah, it's really good. You make lots of friends and you can like ski with the people that are the same level as you. Um, you do learn a lot from those lessons, but obviously the private lessons are where you like really learn how to ski. So completely up to you what you'd prefer to go for. What we found that worked really well as a mixed ability group of friends um, with regards to skiing is the really good people would go off in the morning and go to all the blacks and do all the really scary um, runs that I would never want to do and really tire themselves out. Then after our lessons in the morning, we'd meet up and we'd all have lunch together. So regarding lunch, you can either have lunch on the mountain or you can get like baguettes um, that you make at home and have like cheese and meats and stuff like that in it, which we did pretty much every day. It was just a lot, lot cheaper and you definitely need some carbs. Um, and you can just like put the baguette in your ski jacket as well and ski with it. Definitely useful or obviously if you've got a rucksack, put it in there. So we'd meet up with them for lunch, eat lunch together, wherever that be. Um, and then we'd ski together in the afternoon for a bit as well. So this worked well because we've had our lessons in the morning and they've had their like crazy black runs in the morning. And then when the snow's got not as good, we could all ski together um, and sometimes there'd be moguls or it'd be icy or whatever dependent on obviously the weather but it just means that um, the best skiing's kind of out the way for them and we've had our lessons so we're happy and then we can spend the afternoon together so yeah that worked really well for us and I'd highly recommend doing that if you're in the same situation with like a mixed ability group. So then after that you go to APRE. So if you are going with university um, and you have like reps like Nuco or Wasteland, um, they usually give you a text telling you where APRE skiing is going to be and where um, the club is that you're going to that night or obviously you don't have to go to either of these but where like the university like your group of people will be. Also on the topic of reps they usually come around to your rooms between at prey and um, going out for dinner or going out clubbing as well just to like give you a bit more information about any events that are going on um, and make sure you know like where everything is and stuff too so that's really good. So for those of you who don't know at prey skiing is basically you're all in your ski clothes you're just on a day of skiing and you go to like a bar or like a club and it's usually all outside sometimes it's inside though and everyone just drinks lots of mulled wine and things like that and beer and yeah it's basically just like the start of getting ready for the evening you don't have to drink though if you don't want to sometimes they're on the mountain and sometimes they're like in the town as well but yeah most people um, are still in their ski stuff and have their skis outside too it's 
you will literally see like when people are at praying because there'll be hundreds of skis piled out and um, all these different bars. And then regarding clubbing in the evening, um, you always need to wear your ski coats out when you go clubbing. Um, and they have cloak rooms as well, which are usually like two euros. So nothing, definitely worth taking. I'd always just follow wherever they, the uni people um, are going just because you know, everyone else will be going to those bars. It's usually quite well organized. Um, and another thing, like an event that I love to do is the mountain meal. So it may be classed as like a different name, but usually when you're booking your ski trip, you can opt in to do it. So one year we did like a fondue, I think it was in team, we did like cheese fondue um, and we were in these tents and we had like soup around a campfire at the start and stuff and it was oh it's really really nice so much fun to be with um, you know all of our friends in the same place and then another year I think we did it at Val Turen in this place called Bar 360 so we were all like, at Pro before outside and then we all went inside um, and had this lovely meal and I think we had like a meat fondue then so you have like the oil and the meat and you, you cook the meat in it and they also obviously have stuff for veggie people or any anyone with different allergies and stuff like that too so don't worry about that just make sure you're very upfront with your allergies and then um, after that one we actually skied down the mountain and it was a bit scary to be honest but there were loads of reps everywhere but as in um, there was a lot of wine free flowing so yeah people were getting quite drunk and skiing down but it was all fun because we were all together and they put like lights up and everything so it was really safe or as safe as it could be um, but yeah highly highly recommend doing the ski meal even if you don't want to drink um, afterwards that's absolutely fine so that's the end of my top tips I really hope that you've found this useful if you have then please give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already comment down below literally any questions I'd be happy to help or point you in the right direction of where you can find more information thank you so much for watching I really hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you soon